Our team is from the city of Sumi. When the Shahids fly, we are the first to see them. The safety of our city actually depends on mobile fire teams. Here is the Shahed killer. This is the name these developers gave to their trainer. The weight and dimensions of the model fully correspond to a real Browning machine gun. According to the developers, this is the prime weapon that is used by mobile fire units. There are many mobile fire units around the city, in different units, and they all need to train. That's why there was a need, not just an idea, but a need for a training complex that would allow them to train regularly. Nearby, another team of developers offer another solution. They propose to practice hitting targets with a stinger, but among the targets are also missiles, helicopters, or airplanes. It is designed on a combat basis. That is, we have a combat firing tube, a combat handle, a combat battery, and we added a little bit of our own production. But everything corresponds to the general shot. All the functions that should be in a combat stinger are displayed. There's also an opportunity to train with other types of small arms. It all depends on the needs. And although they do not name the brigades, the team notes that their technology is already used by the Ukrainian soldiers. Using the example of the simulator for the Leleka 100, we are now showing our product, our platform, which allows you to add any number of different types of drones. Oleksandr says that after the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion, the company focused on producing simulators of full-fledged missions for drones. These screens show the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. We model the terrain as closely as possible. We model the cities or locations that are needed. With the help of our simulator, you train all the pre-flight checks, the flight order, we adjust the work of artillery if it is, for example, a reconnaissance drone. We simulate various emergency situations. And the most valuable thing is that we simulate the work of electronic warfare. In total, several dozen teams are represented. The event, called Defense Vision Day, is organized by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine in cooperation with the Defense Builder Acceleration Program. They want to select and implement the best VR and AR simulators that could be used in the training centers of the defense forces. There is a need to improve the traditional training of our military to make sure that these great trainers, simulators, software, and other information and communication systems can get to our front line much faster. We understand that we need to be faster than the enemy, smarter than the enemy, because they outnumber us. That is why we want to saturate our military with such asymmetric solutions and make them more effective. Not only the AR-VR solutions were presented at the event. The separate zone and pitch session were dedicated to defense tech solutions, undergoing the acceleration program for defense tech startups, Defense Builder. The focus is on ensuring that all technologies receive very high-quality management, skill sets on how to build a company, how to talk to investors, and how to pitch properly. In addition, we are always in touch with the military so that we can quickly receive high-quality feedback and understand what needs to be improved in the technology. In particular, attention is being paid to ensuring that all technological solutions can be quickly changed to be ready for Russian actions in the next six to nine months. Today we are presenting the Faust model. Faust is a large bomber drone. It can be used for different purposes, as a bomber, a repeater, or for delivery of ammunition and cargo. This drone, says Victor, CEO of the company, is twice as quiet as similar drones from competitors. This is due to the specially designed blades. At an altitude of 150-200 meters, it is almost inaudible. The developers also solved another problem, deployment time. We can do it in five and a half minutes. That's all it takes. Getting it out of the truck, deploying the whole complex, including the ground station, and launching it. We have a leg injury and amputation. We apply a tourniquet. We enter the game menu, find the right place. It should be five to eight centimeters above the injury. And then we start applying the tourniquet. These are solutions that will be useful not only for the military, but also for civilians. We have a soldier in our team who voluntarily joined the ranks of the armed forces and took over the position of combat medic. He realized that there was a shortage of instructors and the quality of education of an ordinary soldier rescuer was not at the highest level either. We had an idea, why not create an app to train the masses? Among all the projects, there's even a VR movie for the military called The First Battle. This is a film about the primary fear that people have when they've just been mobilized. They are our target audience. It's very important to understand that people who join the army and are then moved to the front line have a fear of not understanding what will happen next and what the first battle will look like. 
With this movie, we show that by acting in a certain way, you can survive and you can reach a certain level of development in a positive way. Of course, it will not be without some tragedies and traumas, unfortunately, this is war. And we are gradually immersing people in this very atmosphere, physical, psychological, and emotional. The companies presented their developments in particular to representatives of various branches of the military. They, in turn, were able to immediately assess the prospects for their use, 